What's up everyone, this is Steve from Bloom Audio. And today we have the all new four driver hybrid IEM from 64 Audio, the U4S. If you're looking for custom IEMs, 64 Audio has a whole range from the A2E at $500 to the A18T at about $3,000. Uh, but for universals, up until a couple years ago, you're pretty much looking at the $2,000 range on. Recently, they changed that with the release of the U6T and now the U4S, which comes in at $1099. While some of 64 Audio's IEMs, like the Neo, have a specifically tailored sound, a Neo being based on the custom Nate which was designed for bass players, and others like the duo and trio have their own kind of unique tuning in the lineup. The majority of the Universal series all follows more or less around a sort of harmon neutral sort of sound. Now U4S has something separating it from the rest of the lineup, and that is a dynamic driver, uh, which you know, the U6T, U12T, U18T, and U18S are all balanced armature only IEMs. So does this dynamic driver set U4S apart from the rest of the lineup besides by just being the least expensive? Let's take a closer look. As I mentioned, U4S is a four driver hybrid IEM. It uses one dynamic driver for the base, uh, one for the low mids, one for the upper mids, and then a TIA tubeless ballast armature for the treble. The sensitivity is 105 dB and the impedance is 6 ohm, making these very sensitive IEMs. Shell is you know, classic 64 audio anodized aluminum. This time though, it comes in a royal blue tint, uh, which is different than the grays you typically get. And it has a perloid black faceplate on it as well. In the package, you get the cable, case, a selection of ear tips, uh, apex modules, uh, and some other stuff, shirt clip, and cleaning brush. Now, we put together a short video about the apex module, so you can check that out. I really like 64 Audio's ear tip selection here. It just seems particularly well thought out with the small, medium, and large in the wide bore silicone spin fit and foam tips. I think overall the package, not particularly flashy, N nothing stands out a lot, but it's just really well put together and well thought out. U4S adheres pretty closely to the classic 64 audio sound. Uh, and the main way it stands out is the dynamic driver and the lower driver count in general, which both has some impact on U4S's sound. In the base, U4S is giving you a little more oomph than you're used to getting in something like a U6T or a U12T. Uh, there's a slightly bigger base shelf overall coming into the mid base. Just a greater overall feeling of impact and physicality coming out of the base as well, but also really strong texture and just a generally natural feeling. And so that affects the mid range as well, where again, the mids are pulled back a little bit to make room for that big base shelf and also some pretty strong treble as well. But the mids feel very natural and detailed. And it doesn't feel like you lose too much there. Uh, again, the vocal presence and other things. And that little bit of, of warmth coming off the bottom, I think just lends a really natural feeling to most acoustic instruments there in the mid range. And a sense of uh, sort of a tactileness with the physicality of the dynamic driver, uh, where that's actually something it can claim over U6T and U12T, where it does feel like that imaging in the mid range is a little bit more tactile in general. Now, the treble, surprisingly well extended with really good air up top and a little bit of sparkle. I think that was the one big surprise of this, where I was expecting, you know, a more sort of physical, maybe a little bit more fun take on a U6T and it definitely does that, but it also just has this really strong treble performance, really 
great sense of resolution, great, you know, fine details in the treble as well. So that's kind of the surprise of you for S is it's not just, you know, this fun bassy 64 audio IEM, uh, but just really strong performance overall. So the one place that U4S doesn't quite hold up to, you know, the U12T in particular, obviously at nearly twice the price, uh, but is that really strong sense of separation and strong holographic feeling in the imaging. Uh, U4S does have a pretty good size soundstage, you know, especially you can mess around with those Apex modules to sort of balance more or less bass, you know, wider or more constricted soundstage. And, you know, so you do get a solid sound stage there, but the imaging isn't quite up to that U12 T level of, you know, strong separation and holographic presentation. But at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit more of that tactile sense to the presentation of the instruments that makes it feel a little bit more intimate and personal, a little bit more, you know, reach out and touch the instruments versus being, you know, Vast. So to get a real feel for U4S, we brought in a couple comparisons. Uh, one is the next step up in 64 Audio's lineup, the U6T, and the other is the Campfire Andromeda Emerald C. So you know the U6T and the U4S certainly share a lot of similarities, a lot of similar DNA there. And the Andromeda Emerald T is interesting because I felt like Campfire Audio, you know, in some ways moved the Andromeda sound a little bit closer to the U12T in some ways with the way they tuned Emerald C. So I thought that would make a good comparison there with a, you know, slightly more 64 Audio-ish version of the Andromeda along with this more fun take on the 64 Audio sound. So surprisingly enough, I felt Andromeda had the most bass presence overall, especially as you went into the sub bass, where Andromeda is really strong. Andromeda and USEC 6T also both just have this really strong texture, feeling of detail in the bass and great speed there as well. Now U4S is no slouch, uh, really great you know, speed, dynamics, and impact there as well, but I felt Andromeda and U6T both just a little bit more detailed in the bass and a little bit faster. Uh, so it, U4S ends up hitting kind of in the middle in terms of the quantity of bass as well, where Andromeda does have a surprising focus down there, uh, but U4S definitely comes with stronger bass than U6T. So in the mid, Andromeda Emerald C is pulling things back a surprising amount especially kind of in that low mids, which can leave a little bit of a hollow feeling there, where U6T and U4S both have pretty similarly tuned mid-range. Uh, and again, just a more rich, full sound overall in the mids than Emerald C does. And again, what was the surprising piece here was the treble with U4S, where I was kind of expecting U6T would either you know, match or maybe exceed U4S in the terms of treble presence, but U4S really does kind of extend a little bit more, offer a little more sparkle, a little more air at the top, uh, where U6T is close, but it's not quite as strong you know, in that upper treble range. And Andromeda Emerald C definitely rolls off that treble a little bit. Uh, so probably, you know, for those very sensitive to treble and fatigue, uh, Emerald C does give you something really strong there, but I think that U6T and U4S are both really well balanced in terms of giving you the treble without having potential for fatigue in the way it's tuned. In the sound stage, I felt U6T was the most sort of three-dimensional and holographic overall, where U4S, as we already mentioned, it doesn't quite have that same, you know, width and separation as some of the other 64 audio IEMs. Andromeda was interesting because I felt, felt like it did kind of balance some of the tactile elements of U4S's imaging along with a pretty good sense of width and a good sense of that holographic separation as well. So there's really kind of three different takes on the imaging here uh, with Andromeda offering a surprising balance in the imaging. 
So comparing U6T and U4S, you know, U6T is a little more neutral overall. I think a little bit stronger technically in general, uh, but U4S injects a little bit more fun into the sound with that impact, that little bit of extra sparkle up top, uh, just offering again, more just a fun twist on the classic 64 audio sound. For Andromeda, Andromeda and U4S are definitely doing some similar things in terms of adding a little bit more fun into the sound signature. I think Andromeda does have some really strong technical features here, uh, where U4S comes off a little bit more natural, especially in the way that it presents the mid-range. Uh, and I think Andromeda is gonna be really strong with more modern electronic recordings, while U4S is just very natural sounding and maybe a little bit more versatile overall. U4S is definitely a great sounding IEM and it does expertly capture that 64 audio a character of balancing sort of pro audio sensibilities and a more audiophile friendly sound, again with a little bit of a bend towards fun and musicality here uh, between the build, uh, the accessories, things like the Apex modules and the sound, uh, U4S is definitely one of the best right now in the $1,000 range. Thanks for watching. You can check out U4S and a lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more high-fidelity audio content.